Are you some sort of sovereign citizen or something? No, I'm not, and that's uh, that's defamation. I'm sorry? I'm asking you a question. I'm not telling no, you. No, sir, I do not work for the police. There's the sergeant that put a man in jail for saying he gets under the thin skin of the mayor. There he is. Jared Stiff. I'm Mr. Paluba. I'm glad to see Mr. Danny who joined us. <clears throat> An Alice County Sheriff's Office is primary law enforcement in the entire county, including Clearwater, including this building. We don't need this. that has no cost is the absolute definition of worthless. Your Gandhi apparently wants everyone to feel indebted somehow to Clearwater Police Department. But as we've seen recently, there's been a lot of problems with management with Clearwater Police Department. It almost appears that uh, they're more serving to, you know, illegal forces in the city and county, such as drug dealers. It even goes back to Mr. Slaughter's time. And something that I'm very disturbed about is yesterday you had this man up here. <coughs> Director, you said, are there any questions for Mr. Dan? Nobody had a question. Not about this, not about his sloppy performance. Nothing. And when you people give him a pass on his bad performance, it just goes on and on and on. So, I'm challenging any of you, call him back up here, Ask him some questions. Ask him why he can't manage the Clearwater Police stand, stand correctly. Please, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's no, I've got, I've got 54 seconds. So we're talking about this agenda. So something on the well, yeah, I don't know about that. Let's hear it, Danby. Anyone else here is asking for you? And I need six point one. Mike Taylor, working with people Laura. Um, me personally, I do not like Clearwater Police. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I understand, it, but this is about Pinellas County. Hey, okay. That's what I'm going to okay. get to that. That's Thank where I'm going to get to. Thank you. I, I have my own personal things that are going on with Clearwater, but I agree that you might as well just take Pinellas County and just give it to them. Let Pinellas County take care of this. Anytime, if Clearwater was the rescue right now, Pinellas County would be the one, not only you know dealing with the court, but they're the ones that are gonna have to transport it. These guys don't even transport people to Pinellas County Jail half the time. They call the, the paddy wagon. But anyway, I really don't, you know, me personally, anything that you put Pinellas County instead of Clearwater, I don't agree that you need anything on this, nothing. Because this is the guy that, you know, I've had issues with him numerous times, and this one, and the Jeep Patrol, and the friggin' Bike Patrol. I just give it to Clearwater, give it to Pinellas County, and let's be done with it. You know, that, I think they do a better job, and actually, they actually give a little bit more respect to their residents. So, that's just what I think, but, you know, unanimous. Anyone else here desires to speak to unanimous? Okay, Mayor, um, we uh, put a pause on public comments on agenda items, on uh, comments on items not on the agenda uh, over a month ago. Uh, 
I am, it's going to run through and terminate beginning in November. We have one meeting in October, so I just I wanted to bring up a um, just to say let's go ahead and extend the pause on this. We're not making any uh, decisions on permanently doing away with public comments on items not on the agenda, but pause it till the beginning, at least the first meeting in January. Uh, which will give us a chance to go ahead and talk about this and see if we're putting a permanent uh, pause on it or if we <clears throat> give us a little more time to talk about it. So I wanted to bring that up and see what the rest of the group <coughs> thought of that and um, if, uh, if they would be for a, a, a continued pause at least to the beginning of the, of the new year. We discussed this at the work session uh, yesterday, so I think we've only discussed a large part. So this time we'd like to uh, invite the public to uh, speak to agenda item 11. Uh, Mr. Haluba. I would wait for October. You know, I don't know what you got going on, Cotton. Um, I just want to say, Mr. Cotton, I do appreciate the phone calls that we had, Mr. Rector, Mr. Rector. I appreciate the conversation that we had. The biggest problems that I have are any one of you that has said that they would defend our rights and they would stand up for our rights, Mr. Menino. You said that at the, I think it was the Kelly Hitler. Kelly Kelly Doug Kelly show or whatever it's called. You were like, oh, well, you'd stand up and we've got the guy that comes from four hours. And he, yes, I come from four hours because I care about the Constitution. I care about what is what has happened to me in this in this city. 
It's happened to me in my own city. You know, I've done the same thing. But they, you know what they've done? They listened and they moved on. This has only been happening since before three of you got up here. This has been ongoing since all the state. And here you are doubling down, tripling down now, because <coughs> I already can count the four one vote. I know who's not voting for this. And I, I commend that person because guess what? They are standing on their oath. You know, you know, anybody that's ever taken an oath, your oath never dies. My family, just about all my family, except for me, I didn't get in the military, but I stand behind those same oaths. I've got my grandfather's flag when we got there. I stand behind this Constitution, and for some reason, none of you care about it. Heck, Sarah, i got a big problem with you, too, because you're so scared. You know they wanted to try to charge me $348 for all these scary and blah, blah, blah emails. Just give them to me. Put them out there. Put them on your website. Let's see what's so scary about all this stuff that's being said. I'm not the one that's scaring you. You know, just because I got all this stuff on. You're, you're scared of this. I don't bring guns in here. You know I have guns. I go carry my guns on the beach before I brought a gun in here. But every one of you, and especially you slaughter, I mean, just about everyone up here, and the one person I'm gonna give a lot of credit to is Cotton, because out of all the stuff you've heard today, you're going to hear one person tonight say no. Ah, i got to take this thing off. It's heavy. It's like 40 pounds. Yeah, I don't give a flying fun. I don't. It doesn't bother me to wear the shirt and say, Hey, we get, we get emails from the special leaders. Come on, yeah, yeah. Well, send, 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 send me the emails. Nothing in this room. Send, send, send me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else desire to speak to this event? Hi, my name is John. Happy Constitution Week, which is pretty, uh, pretty crazy considering it seems like only 20% of the council actually uh, <coughs> understands the Constitution. Why public comments are essential in city council meetings. The public comments are the heartbeat of a rep, uh, democratic republic in action. When residents are given the opportunity to speak at city council meetings, they bring vital perspectives that reflect the needs, concerns, and ideas of the community. These comments ensure transparency, hold elect, elected officials accountable, and foster a sense of trust between government and the people it serves. By listening to the voices of the public, city council can make informed decisions that better reflect the diverse interests of the entire community. Public comments aren't just a courtesy, they are a fundamental right and a necessary element of good governance. When city council silence the public, it, is off, it often insinuates several negative things. Lack of transparency, silencing public comments can suggest the council is not interested in open, transparent governance. It creates the perception that they may be hiding decisions or actions from the public. Disregard for public input, it, it implies that the council does not value or prioritize opinions, concerns, or the needs of its constituents. This can lead to feelings of disenfranchisement among the public. Avoidance of accountability. By silencing the public, the, the council may seem like they are trying to avoid being held accountable for their decisions or actions, suggesting a lack of willingness to address criticism or tough questions. Erosion of trust. This can foster distrust between the public and their elected officials. As it appears, the council is acting unilaterally, unanimous, or with little regard for the democratic process. Authoritarian tendencies. In extreme cases, it would be interpreted as an attempt to control suppressed free speech, which raises concerns about the council's commitment to democratic principles and individual rights. Silencing the public not only damages the council's credibility, but also weakens the democratic process by cutting off a key avenue for civic engagement and oversight. You guys claim this is Constitution Week, and the only person I know that voted against an unconstitutional, whatever you call it, is Mr. Cotton. Are you guys telling me the four of you don't believe in free speech? You don't believe in the Constitution? We know Stiff doesn't because he arrested somebody for speech. We know he doesn't because he assaulted somebody for speaking. And I believe one of his bosses or the higher up just got busted for drug dealing. 
Do anybody in government besides Mr. Cotton know, understand, have read the Constitution? Doesn't seem like it. Anyone else here desire to speak to the agenda? Vote the right way. So I'll start this off real quick um, because I do believe uh, in the Constitution as alluded tonight, um, especially freedom of speech, press, religion, assembly, and addressing government, uh, which are in your core five of the First Amendment. Um, with that being said, I do have to acknowledge when we see, especially in past week, a former president that has been targeted twice for assassination attempts because of rhetoric that has been spewed by mainstream media, in my opinion. You guys don't know the people on the other side of the screen. You're putting a video out there. I don't know what it is, what's being edited. Do I think that any of you in this room, I would believe that nobody in here is gonna harm anybody. I take you for your word. You don't know who's watching from the other side of the screen that's taking your words and then is gonna come and do something. So that's when I tell, you know, Mr. Gloover, please articulate better when you're choosing. It was, a fig it was figurative. So, again, people will choose to choose what they want. So that's where I'm coming from on this. I still will back the Constitution, but there's danger. We'll okay. see. Free speech, but those guys are, I gave you that. Just so I'm, I'm just asking how this will resolve. We're just asking for an amicable an solution. To, so you all have a chance to say, let us talk about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Afterwards, it's free to have So thank you. Anybody else? Vice Mayor? Okay, so I know I, I put this ex extend the pause uh, on the agenda to talk about it. Um, the, the feedback that I've gotten from our citizens that live in Clearwater, we've, we've all got a lot of thank yous for this because, well, first of all, there were a lot of citizens that were afraid to come to council meetings to actually speak because of the antics of you guys. If you would come and just talk and if you had an issue, like free speech wasn't taken away today. You guys talked on every issue, every one of them you took off. So don't tell me that you By guys don't have free speech. By, By law. law. Only because of law. No, okay, listen, I'm just, let, let me talk. Let him talk. What I don't want to do, and I'm a big advocate of free speech, first and second amendment rights. Right? We'll see. Okay? So don't tell me that we're not. We'll we're see. We're just trying to do something that will help expedite meetings for our citizens here that feel threatened when they come and put up with the antics that go on. I feel threatened. So I'm, I'm going to probably change my mind on this just for what I've seen tonight. Um, I don't know if I'm going to want to extend the pause past uh, November. Maybe we should just let it die out and um, and let people like uh, Rudy that needs to come in here feel like he needs to talk to us um, and other citizens. But what I'm going to ask you guys, just help us move these meetings along in a, in a way without being like a circus. That's what threatens people. And so we're up here hearing from our citizens that live here. I know you you drive four hours, which I don't really understand exactly why. I love and you, and you mentioned, you talk about every agenda item that you have no idea about to waste time. I understand that because you're videotaping all of it. And that's the whole idea is to waste time and make it inconvenient for us and everybody that's watching. So if, if we just put the citizens as far as I'm concerned, we put it back on and let the citizens determine if it's, but if you guys would just not put on the circus, if you have if you have things to say, we'll listen to it. All right, that's my thoughts. So four, four, maybe four. I'll withdraw this. Uh, I could, I'm just gonna wanna hear from the rest of the council members here what they feel. That's a minute, sure. So, in attending all the events that I, that I go to, in the last few weeks, a lot of the rhetoric or a lot of the conversations I've had were actually surprising. And they were, thank you. Thank you for 
for doing something because people who were, and I call them, call them regulars, are not here tonight. They're not here tonight because they knew you were glad to come. I'm here. And so I want to speak for the people who are not here to me, whose voice they feel not here. is confined. Their, your behavior, whether you agree or not, make other people uncomfortable. When you tell an elderly couple to F off, it makes them uncomfortable. And so I have to listen to those people. I gotta stop. You, you do this every friggin' time. You gaslight me. You all have been sitting there gaslighting me. This is. No, I, I can't not, let that. It's not that hard, okay? It's, it's really hard. hard to sit here and Propaganda. let you say lies. If you're, not gonna, if you're not gonna listen, you have your chance to talk, then, then please leave. I, make me. We listen to you. Oh. Now's your time make to listen me. to us. Well, if, are, are you going to keep disrupting the meeting? I was. She's gaslighting me. Instead of gaslighting me and pointing the finger at me and saying I'm now? the one that's the problem, are I'm not right? the problem. You, Texera, Rectum, you know, you Al Britton, Menino, Margolis, Call, Slaughter, friggin' Poirier, friggin' Gandhi, Stiffmeister that sits under the Constitution. You guys look at that thing every single day. I'm leaving, dude. All y'all. I'll be back. Don't you worry. Every single one of you is your water. So are we in recess? We're in recess. Why is it that we can't come to the table? Why is it that we can't sit down at, at a table, let's say, or a conference room? I talked to Mr. Taylor, and he, he said he's going to. Well, I, I'm just trying to run a meeting. I understand that, and, sir. And we listen to you all. And you all. <coughs> That's fine. So, for the rest of the meeting, if you guys will listen to and I'll, not interrupt. I'll be glad to listen once you're back in session. Then, then you can say, but if, if you can't not disrupt the meeting, then, then we're That's, asking. That's fine, but why can't we have a civilized conversation we instead of after the meeting? This is a after meeting. the meeting. You guys go on a little short bus and have the police escort you away. What are you talking about? Where are we going to do this? I'll come out and talk to you. Okay, great. All right, fair enough. Well, Miss Texera, she's the one that instigated this. Well, she did. It was a lot of gaslighting. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. It's her respect. It's like gaslighting. Sure it is, but it's false info. It's false information based on the facts. You're in my way. She did. Did you guys take a referendum on the free speech? Or are we talking about anecdotal stuff? Look, we're not. We're not doing this now. Okay. We're in recess. If if you want to stay, great. But I'm asking to listen and not disrupt you. I just want to see if you're going to vote for the Constitution. Are we in recess? Look, if you want, when I go back in. Yeah. Well, if you can listen. And yeah. Can I already said I would, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Call the meeting back to order, and we're discussing agenda item eleven point one and council discussion. So, council member Yeah. So, as I was uh, saying. I wanted to convey uh, what has communicated to me through various events that I've attended in the last few weeks. And there are those citizens who were not comfortable with the situation that happened before. Um, and their voice is just as important as yours. Freedom of speech goes both ways, even if you don't like what I'm saying. There have been people who used to come and do not come because they feel uncomfortable. Whether you agree with that or not, see, and that's and that's a dichotomy. Non-issue. That person who feels uncomfortable, the way they feel is just as. I feel uncomfortable with your I'm police. I'm uncomfortable every time I come anyway, in here. <laughs> my, what I'm you trying to say. You said you're not going to use I apologize. Okay. I apologize. What I'm trying to say is to look at both sides, and I have to listen to both sides. And there are a lot of citizens who agree with the decision that we've done. And I'm asking an exception. That's all I'm doing, communicating from both ways. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I <coughs> have great respect for our Constitution, 
respect for our citizens, having their voices heard. Um, we went over this, I think we've almost beat this issue too many times and had too far of discussion with it, but I think it's important to recognize as we did yesterday, what we've done as a staff, and I thank staff for it, uh, regarding being out in the community more often, putting processes and protocols in, in effect in our neighborhoods, in our neighborhood associations to make sure that our citizens' uh, voices are being heard, that they feel respected. Uh, I think we've done a, a commend council on the job and the work you've all done, and answering emails, answering phone calls. Uh, we've all signed up, put our name on, and said we will show up to any HOA meeting if anybody wants us to be there. Neighborhoods Services is at every single meeting. We now have processes in place where they give us detailed updates of every single neighborhood <coughs> meeting that all of you read and all of you have reached out and followed up with citizens from those meetings that have concerns, so I, I commend you on that. Um, with, I'm gonna support an extension on this till January, first week of January, as, as was alluded to in the beginning, and the reason why is what's been in front of us today. And unfortunately, the pattern of behavior shows us that the group shows up. It's amazing. We're somewhat model citizens to get through an agenda and so that you can speak and create content at every level possible. The second we get close to the end and closing it, we blow up and cause some big scene, have people escorted out, interrupt the meeting, obstruct business, or storm out cussing and ripping vests off our chest just to close the show and create more content. And that's been a pattern of behavior since my first day sitting in here. And I think that's, un that's unfortunate because the individuals <coughs> that have to pay for that are the, the, the Rudys and the Chris's and, and the Mr. Jonesons and the people that wanna show up uh, and have their voice often heard. You two are here, but we hear constantly and weekly from our citizens that say thank you for pausing and we are not coming back to City Hall, unfortunately, until the obstruction stops. We just saw a group of, I, are you auditors? Is that the group that we're called? I see your shirt. I'm a constitutionalist. That. Okay, but I know we're a group called You've heard of that. And your shirt says it that you're probably wearing today. We no, just saw a group of auditors assassinate a Dallas police officer, operating in the same method with cameras, shouting the same rhetoric that you do. That's a and lie. the last thing we ever want is to see that spin off in our city of Clearwater mm -hmm. to our residents, to our staff, or to this council. At the end of the day, it's about safety. It's about safety of our residents, it's about safety of our staff, and my decision about the safety of this council. And so that we can handle the business of the people without constantly going through a charade and being obstructed, I will support <coughs> extending the pause on this uh, agenda item 11.1 .1 until Jan the first week of January. Anybody else? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll say a couple things. Uh, number one, um, eliminating uh, one agenda item has absolutely nothing to do with the Constitution. There is no constitutional right to an agenda item. This is a business meeting, and we're not limiting anybody's, anybody's right to come in and speak on an agenda item. In fact, tonight, we demonstrated everybody who's wanted to speak on an agenda item has done so. No one's had the right to that. We've simply removed the clause an agenda item. And we're not even required under Florida law, the United States Constitution, to even have that agenda item. We have traditionally had it. People have come in and they've been able to offer comments or thoughts, as Mr. Nightlight has said, on items not on the agenda in a respectful way, not cause disruption. Um, but we're not, we've not, we're not now, and we've never been. You don't have a constitutional right to come into a courtroom during a trial and just say, hey, judge, I want to say whatever. I mean, it's time, manner, and place. And certainly, all of you, and you're recording a lot of this, you have a right to take whatever you want to post on Facebook and put your own voice to it. Folks write to us every day. Uh, Mr. Taylor writes to us, Mr. Aluba writes to us three or four times a day, uh, reaches out to us. Many residents do. And and we often reach out to everyone, I think, the first time they have a concern, whether it's grass is too high at the neighbor's yard or whatever, 
we reach out to those folks. We talk to them about the concerns they have that are not on this agenda. We respond, we talk to them, we have conversations, and that's the most effective way to get things done and get your message heard. In today's world, there are a gazillion opportunities for you to speak, share your thoughts and opinions and ideas, share them with us. And, but this has absolutely nothing to do with the Constitution, the constitutional right. You have the constitutional right to say whatever you want to say about the city of Clearwater, about any of us, and many people do. Uh, part of public service, I get it. I don't like everything you said about me, and these folks don't either. It's a free world, that's part of the cost of being in public, uh, public office. But in this forum, in this meeting, we're trying to conduct city business. And like the other council members, <coughs> overwhelmingly, I got thanked on Pier 60 by someone uh, Saturday who said, thank you for doing that. I feel like I have an, if I have an issue on the agenda, I'm a lot more comfortable in coming, knowing that there aren't going to be folks showing up without any relationship to what's on the business item to speak. They, they feel like they, during this period of time when we've had all these disruptions, like the one we had at the beginning of the night, Several of you talked about the daughters of the American Revolution. Appreciate them. Agree with you 100%. Constitution is the most important document in the United States. Appreciate what they have done. With them here, with the National Suicide Prevention Month people, with the National Heritage, these, these folks should not have to endure the outburst, the protest, that the gentleman with your group came and did. That's outrageous. It's not with it me. makes everybody no. uncomfortable. I had to apologize to those folks because of that. Our citizens in Clearwater do not want to endure that. And they shouldn't have to. They should, this should be an inviting, welcoming, safe place for them to come to talk about items on their agenda. It's our community, and overwhelmingly, the people are in the community, our, our, in this community, are outraged by the behavior of folks coming in who do nothing but generate publicity for themselves, to generate YouTube clicks and subscribers, and but the, any of it, that is none of this has entered into the Constitution. And you show up tonight, you come in, and as you've done, talk about every agenda, which is fine if that's what you want to come in. And, and the public, all the public, whether you're a resident of Clearwater or not has the ability to come and speak to the agenda items, right. always will, regardless of how we do this one agenda item on items not on the agenda. That will be open to everybody, and it's allowed under Florida law, and we will honor that. But I just wanted to share that, and I, personally, I, I was for the yesterday, you know, considering this in October, we understand that Councilmember Cotton can't be here, he won't participate in this discussion here tonight. But I would be for whatever the council wants to do on this, pausing it and now or waiting to the next meeting to, to pause it. Um, I, I can tell you that my experience over two months, it's not, it's not kept anyone from sharing their opinions with us. No one, not one person. Uh, Mike Wicks came, talked to all of us. That was much more effective than coming to the podium meeting with each of us individually and sharing your thoughts than coming to the podium and not meeting with us and, and sharing your thoughts. So whether or not you're happy with the response or not, yeah. that, those meetings were more effective than coming here and talking to us and having a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. And I can tell you a number of people have done that and just taking this item off the agenda has not stopped anybody. We get mails, as, as mentioned, from certain citizens four or five a day on issues that are not on the and we'll continue to do that, we'll continue to respond. But that started this meeting today, that was unfortunate. Because all those folks in the room, they just love this community and city and are participating. They just want to come to a city council meeting and they should not have to endure that. And since we paused this, we've not had as much of that as we did before. So it's up to the council, but I would be open to whatever their original proposal or whatever they want to do. Yeah, and I, Mayor, if you would
in mind. I um, I go back and forth on this. I don't mind anybody standing up there and disagreeing with me and telling me they don't like me. That's part of the job. Haloub and I had a conversation after the meeting yesterday. Yes, I did. We we just have to agree to disagree. We can we can do that. And there's not, nothing wrong with that. That's the American way. But the circus is what I don't want to see happen because it scares people away that really need to come in to talk to us about issues they have. So I'm not saying right now that we're doing away with it for good. I'm just saying we're going to pause it at the beginning of the year. We've got a lot happening. The city has a lot happening in the <coughs> next month and we won't have a chance to really talk about it as much as we should. So we're just gonna extend the pause. I'd like to extend the pause to the beginning of the year and then maybe we do our way with it then and we go back to business as usual. If if you will not come and make a circus out of it, you can get up here and tell me you hate me and you know, I'm not doing a good job, that's fine. Just don't make a circus that scares everybody else away from here. That's what all of us want. Is it this time I can take a brief little discussion? Is there a motion? Move to approve agenda item 11.1 and extend the pause for public comments and items not on the agenda until the first week of January, maybe 2025. Second. All right, any further discussion? How about either a, like a date of January 1 or the first meeting in January? Because you don't actually meet the beginning of January, you meet in the first meeting. Of January. I originally said the first meeting in January, whenever that is. Okay. Second. Okay. Is that clarity on that? Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. That would be four in favor and Councilmember Cotton opposed. Okay. All right. Next item 11.2. Mayor. Mayor Gurian. I, I just want to say with regards to these performance goals, I think they're yeah. very well done and very well thought out. Uh, it's a very good first step in putting together measurable goals. So I would suggest a couple of things. And now specifically we're talking in regards to uh, the Yes, ma'am. Uh, this first goal is you want to go over there? We've got some space. I just have a really quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I didn't want to assume. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm. Yes, ma'am. Is that a Nazi salute you were doing? Oh, the when they act like Nazis, I salute them as Nazis. Okay, I was just confirming that's what you were doing. Yeah, I just want them to know when you when you uh, vote against the Constitution, you're acting as a Nazi. These are like 1939 German citizens, where you know everything okay. they did against the Jews was okay because they were Jews. Everything they're doing against us is okay because we're auditors, because we're a circus, yeah. and all the propaganda they were saying. Um, I didn't bring my notepad to take notes because I was just confirming that. So can I record it you? Start, it starts and, a small Sorry, can you not? Oh, sorry. sorry, is there any way I can just ask my question without being interrupted? Oh, yeah, no, sorry, is that possible? Sorry, yeah. Is it okay with you if I record your answer so I have it accurate? Sure. Okay, I just wanted to confirm. Um, I didn't want to assume, so I wanted to confirm if you were doing the Nazi salute in the chamber. The reason I was doing that is because they're acting like Nazis, so I salute them as Nazis. They're acting just like the citizens of Germany in 1939, where Jews' rights were taken away because they were Jews, because they were dirty, just like you heard them in there saying, we're auditors, we're creating a circus, and we're not serious about uh, the Constitution or, or the Bill of Rights. We are activists for the First Amendment and free speech, and they are limiting free speech because they don't like the way it's delivered. They don't like our style. Uh, the First Amendment was made to protect unpopular speech, it's not made to be respectful towards the government. The Founding Fathers revolted against people like this. So we're, all we have is our voice, and the louder we are, the more attention we get. Yeah, just like you want clicks and views for your media outlet, we want clicks and views, and we want people to see our activism. Well, I don't do what I do for clicks and views. Well, you do it for, you know, your, your station does it for revenue. I, I work for the newspaper. Right, but they, sell, they try to make revenue, right? They're not, they're not in there to do it for free. They're not there to lose money. So just like you guys work for money, we want to work for money too. It's the same idea, but they never come after you guys. It's always the independents that are making money off of this. Okay. 
One last thing, um, I did reach out to the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. Fire, yes. Yeah, and um, they confirmed that the First Amendment does not require local governments to reserve time for public comment at their meetings. I but, understand that. But they added that giving the public an opportunity to voice concerns directly to the representative serves democratic values. And it's in the spirit of the First Amendment. Of course, yeah. yes. I just wanted to clarify that it's not in the Constitution. I, and I understand, and the only reason they let us talk about agenda items is because the law forces them to. Well, maybe we need a law that forces open dialogue at every meeting also. Mm -hmm. It is, as a matter, it's the First Amendment. If we're not allowed to redress them except the ways they want to be redressed, then we have nothing. I understand. All right. Yeah, All right. Well, you. thank you for your time. Appreciate okay. you. Have a good day. You too. See you, brother. Yeah, sorry for interfering with your... Uh... You're, sorry. sorry for interfering with your I, question. I didn't, I didn't know that you were interviewing it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry. Do you know what paper she works for? Uh, no. Probably a local paper here. Paper here does. All right, everybody. There you go.